Good evening and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Christ for the Crisis Evangelistic Series, where we share the message of salvation across the length and breadth of the entire globe. We're streaming live from the beautiful island of Jamaica. And if you haven't been with us since the time we started on Sabbath Gone, uh, you have missed a lot. But we're happy that you're with us this evening and we want you to encourage others to join. Also, if you are just joining us this evening, we're thankful that you're here. And we promise you that under God, you are going to be blessed this evening because God has promised that if you trust him, especially in these times of crisis, oh, yes. Sister Lisseth, <laughs> then he will give you everything that you need. There are a number of persons who have been with us from the very beginning though, and we're also happy to have you. And Sister Lisseth, I want you to now share with everyone watching from the length and breadth of Jamaica right across the globe, how they can connect with us as we encourage them to share the links. Sure. Well, let me say happy Tuesday, first of all. Thank Roma. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. No. All roads lead to 58 Brunswick Avenue, not true? Yes, right here in Spanish Town, the Family of God Seventh-day Adventist Church. But if for any reason you didn't catch the bus, if for any reason you missed it, welcome to the online congregation. Amen. Yes, delighted to have you on the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, and of course our website, watchcjclive.com. And we know that various church platforms and field platforms are joining us. Welcome, warm welcome. We want to encourage you to share that link. You heard our sister Lisseth talk about where it is that you can find this program on Watch CJC Live, on our YouTube pages and Facebook pages. Please invite your friends, your family members, your neighbors, run along and tell them that the Christ for the Crisis Crusade is on and they can't afford to miss it. Or evangelist, Sister yes. Lisseth. Pastor Everett Brown has been trumpeting the word of God. Spirit-filled, power-packed, yes. and Bible-backed, of course. And we're expecting more of that tonight. Amen. But the before, perfect gift. The perfect. That is his topic for I tonight. I am so looking forward to that gift. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. So go right ahead, my sister, and tell our viewers and those watching and listening online what comes up next. All right, looking forward to the praise music and the empowerment prayer, and of course, the message from the man of God, youth ministry feature, and I think this is what is coming up now. What's the name of it, Sister Roma? Is it Talk Up? Talk, Talk up. Out. Be blessed. Amen. world in 2022 has been experiencing a series of crises that has brought a sense of hopelessness on people everywhere. And Jamaica, the citizens of Jamaica, as we celebrate our 60th year of independence, have been experiencing our fear, sheer of poverty, Increasing murders, diseases, and death. Where can we go to find answers to these crises and the challenges that we face? Come join me as we explore the Word of God. And so I invite you to bring your friends and let us anchor faith in Him because He is the answer the crisis that we face. He is our Savior. He is the solution to the problems that you face. So give your heart to Him and experience peace of mind and eternal salvation.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening to those who are online and those who are in the physical temple. So, for this afternoon, I have Janelle Holmes from the church, from the Clare Park SDA Church. Scott from the Diamond Acres Seventh Day Adventist Church. For this evening, for the Talk Up Talk Out session, we will be having the topic the perfect gift. The perfect gift. Have you struggled to find the perfect gift for your loved one? What's the best gift you've ever been given? Do you remember who gave you that gift? And why? Do you still have it? Mm, that's a really good question. You know, in life, we've received many gifts from our loved ones, from persons who wish us well that those gifts vary. You know, clothes, phones, all various things, very, very variety of things. But we always should remember, we always need to remember that we have a gift. We receive that gift, and that gift is love. L O V E. Love. Tell, me, tell me some more about that gift, that love. Well, in the Bible, in John chapter 3, verse 16, which is a verse that is favorite among all Christians. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. That just tells us that God not just loves me, loves you. He loves all of us. All of us. Not just Janelle or Gladwin. Those who are watching and those who are here in the congregation. Mm -hmm. But Gladwin, I have a question for you. You said you received a gift. The gift of love. How have you used that gift? Well, that gift that God has blessed me with, that has blessed all of us, we, well, you ask me about what I use it to do, but I use the gift of love and share it with others. You know, because just as how we said that God loved the world, the fact that we are born means that God loves us. And the fact that we were born and we're alive, we should live for Jesus. So we, you know, sharing, encouraging words to others, reading the Bible, sharing the word of God with others. So I think in a life, I can say that that's how I use the love that God has blessed me with for living for him. So yes, I can say, we can say that. And one more thing to share about this gift of love. It gives us access to something that is one of a kind. It gives us access to salvation. It gives us access to eternal life. And I have a quote from Sister White I would like to share with you. So Gladwin will be using his gift of love to share with me his phone so okay. I can read your Sister White's quote. No problem. So this is what she said. Love is not a strong, fiery, impetuous passion. It is, on the contrary, an element calm and deep. It looks beyond mere externals and is attracted by qualities alone. It is wise and discriminating, and its devotion is real and abiding. Mm, amen. That's the million-dollar question is, have you received that gift? And if you have received that gift, are you accepting that gift? Are you using that gift? Yes, and as we close the Talk Up Talk Out session for this evening, we'll now offer a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear most kind and heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us. For loving us in spite of us, for loving us and made how we are as sinners, dear Father. But Lord, we just want to thank you once more for all of the love that you've bestowed upon us. And Lord, we pray that you will give us the strength to not just love those who are, in, those who are close to us, but love all the persons we come in contact with. Grant us your peace and understanding as we move forward in our lives as we move forward in our journey as walk as in the Adventist Christians. In your name we pray. Amen.
Development Fund is organized by the... Good evening, everyone. It's now time for our praise and worship. And I'm sure you all can agree with me that we give God thanks today for the rain. Indeed, the place was cool, and he has brought us in his course to give him all the praise that he deserves. As we come tonight, let us worship him in spirit and in truth. We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again, in one accord. Something good is going to happen, something good is in store. We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together. together again in one accord something good is going to happen something good is in store we are together again just praising the lord i feel
mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, Savior, and soon coming King. Please assume an attitude of prayer as I pray. Eternal Father, great God of this vast universe, we come to you this evening in faith because you have said to us in Luke 18 verse 1, men ought always to pray and not faint. So, Father God, I present to you the Christ for the Crisis Evangelistic Series. I pray that you will bless every aspect of this service. Lord, I pray for those online. As they watch, I pray that your Holy Spirit will touch their hearts and prick their consciences. I pray, Lord, that those who are impervious to your spirit will become vulnerable tonight. Father God, I pray for the smooth running of the Wi-Fi, the equipment. I pray that every aspect of tonight's program will be effective and efficient. Father God, we know without the Holy Spirit, we can't do anything. So we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to take full charge in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Good evening, everyone. Let me, let me try that again. Good evening, everybody. Trust that you all had a very good day. I trust that you all had a great day. The truth be told, whether it was a good day or a bad day, we serve a good God and a God who kept us throughout the day. And we are just so happy that he has allowed us once more as friends to meet this is the time to connect, not just with those in the main uh, sanctuary tonight, not just with those at the main site, but it is always my joy to connect with those at the other sites, the main sites across the Central Jamaica Conference. There are so many other sites uh, that are connected to this evangelistic series. And as usual, we want to give a shout out to these uh, very, very special sites at this time. Let me first start, let me begin with a Blessed Television. We have quite a number of persons who are worshiping on Blessed TV with us. Come on, if you're on Blessed TV uh, tonight watching, wherever you're watching from, we just want you to put something in the chat. What about uh, those in North Jamaica Conference, from the North Jamaica Conference? Please put in the chat uh, NJC which is for North Jamaica Conference. Then, of course, we want to move to Waterford and Gregory Park. That district is led by Pastor Ramon Phoenix. If you are a member or a visitor and you are on site, perhaps in your bedroom or in your living room and you are watching our, our, our Christ for the Crisis Evangelics this series, Please put in the chat, Waterford, Gregory Park, you're in the house. Then, of course, we want to recognize those in the Lionel Town. As a matter of fact, I was told that those folks in Lionel Town, they are worshiping from the community center. You are right there in Lionel Town, in the community center. Thumbs up. We want to recognize all of our visitors, all of our members. I know you're having a wonderful time. Then, of course, we want to jump up into Manchester where we have the poorest district. I am seeing uh, by faith a uh, Pastor Valentine and a host of members and visitors in that district. Shout out to the poorest district. I'm sure that, uh, you know, we would have loved to see you live, see those beautiful faces and to see that level of excitement that you're experiencing. Then, of course, we have the Mike Town District that's uh, also in Manchester. We want to recognize and, and, and give a big shout out to Dr. Paul and, and all those Beautiful folks in the Greendale, Mike Town area. What about the Spur Tree District? Yes, we are seeing you. Come on, drop that in the chat. The chat. Drop it in the chat. 
we want to make sure that you are present and accounted for. What about those folks from the Parliamentary Gardens that's in Clarendon? Come on, drop it in the chat. Parliamentary Gardens, make sure that you drop in the chat that you are present. What about the Tollgate District? That's a beautiful and wonderful church. As a matter of fact, you're going to be hearing from the Tollgate Choir as we run this series. Uh, uh, come on, Tollgate, you are actively present and you are involved. Let us just drop in the chat uh, a Tollgate. What about the, the, the Tredega Park, the Waltham, the Diamond Acres, the Spallings, Halls Hall, Kitsentown, Old Road. What about the Barton's District, Rugby Park? What about the Linstead, Birria, Brayton, Maypen, Bellis Gate? What about, what about all these, these wonderful people who are worshiping online? You're overseas, perhaps US, uh, perhaps Canada, perhaps England, perhaps Trinidad, perhaps uh, Guyana. Come on, drop in the chat exactly where you are worshiping from. I, I am having a great time. I want you to understand also that in the main house there is a lot of excitement. There's a lot of energy you can tell that something good is about to happen. Now, now watch this. I have a challenge for you. I have a challenge for you. So I want to put out a challenge tonight. And this is not just for the main side. Listen to me carefully now. This is for the main side that is right here at the Family of God Church. But it is also for Manchester, Clarendon, and also for St. Catherine. So this is what we will do. If there's any member and the first uh, call we get, and we're expecting to get this call from either a pastor or an elder to tell us which night we have one member or perhaps a visitor who invite, who would have invited no less than 25 persons and would have brought those 25 persons to their site. That person will walk away with a Samsung Galaxy tablet. Come on, this is exciting. Let me say that again. In every parish, Manchester, Clarendon, St. Catherine, and the main site, we have a lot of kids who are going back to school and they are in need of their laptops and their tablets. We are saying, all you need to do to qualify for this Galaxy, the Samsung Galaxy tablet, is just to bring to the main site 25 visitors one night, any night. And the first to get, get the call to us here at the Central Jamaica uh, Conference or at the Christ of the Crisis Evangelistic Series, that tablet will be delivered. Are we together? So that's the challenge. We're expecting to hear a call from you either on a Sunday night or perhaps on Wednesday night. Remember now, all 25 persons that you invite who must be visitors must be in attendance. It is getting sweeter and sweeter with each passing night. Ladies and gentlemen, let us keep the connection. Until such time, keep sweet, keep smiling, and keep stepping one love. something, something grand to look forward to, which is the second coming of Christ, and to live with Him in heaven. There was a holy hush all over as I walked into the room, as I stood before Him face to face, I was gloriously made new. There was a great and awesome presence And a light as bright as day And as I bowed to kneel with the angels I heard the Spirit say All rise, all rise To stand before the throne in the presence of the Holy One All rise, all rise 
as we worship the Messiah. Oh, right. And as I looked at those all around me with their hands uplifted high, and the Spirit laid his hands on me, and I uplifted mine. We were singing hallelujahs and praises to his name. And as I bowed to kneel with the angels, I heard the Spirit say, All rise, all rise to stand before the throne. In the presence of the Holy One, all rise, all rise. As we worship the Messiah, singing holy, 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 worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was and is and is to come. He is the great I am. Before the throne in the presence of the Holy One, all rise, all rise as we worship the Messiah. All Give to me is money, you know. Cause you love money, but yeah, one father or fifty thousand, I eat that. You see it. For me, the perfect gift is a Rubicon 392. It's for 12.5 million dollars, or an X6 might work for now, cause I have my house already. The perfect gift for me would be a nice Bible. Yes, that would be a very nice gift for me, and I would really appreciate appreciate it very much. Perfect gift for me would be to see my son, you know, just to come par with him. My son is not here, obviously, so that would be my perfect gift right about now. Yeah, for me, a better way of life, what I think I would want, a better way of life. Liberty, love, happiness, joy, peace, comfort, and all the, the best and the above, because earth corrupt right now. The perfect gift for someone who's not a believer would be a Bible. So the person can read for themselves and try to get an understanding of what the Bible says. So the perfect gift for me is life. Because to me, I've already achieved, you know, family-wise, I've achieved what I, I can be comfortable with. So the perfect gift for me, life. And just have life. And, you know, we have life, so we have to live life and love God. That's it. Yes, so the perfect gift for me is one million US. The perfect gift for me right now would be a in-law. 
a million dollars to start my own business right now. To stop work for anyone and do my, be my own businessman. A million dollars. Have a car to transport me around. Yes. It's for my children to get a good education and for me to have a roof over my head so my children and I can live the right way until God come for his kingdom. Is to go to university engineering and um, mechanical engineering and architecture free of cost. Yeah. Well, the perfect gift for me today is my birthday and it's a blessed. I'm so grateful to be alive today. Thanks be to God. I'm like 40 years old and I don't, don't look like 40. To God, to give him the glory and the honor for the world are pretty and by we are fulfilled. So you have to give God thanks. The Christ for the Crisis Evangelistic Campaign needs your help to fulfill the mission of saving souls for the kingdom of God. There are three ways in which you can help as members of the church. Number one, pray for the program. Number two, to bring a friend or to send the link to a friend so that they can also taste and see that the Lord is indeed good. And number three, to make a financial contribution towards the evangelistic campaign. Contributing financially to God's work is a great way to serve God. And I just want to make an appeal to those who are in the sanctuary this evening and those who are watching online to go through the various mediums available so that you are able to contribute to the advancement of the work during this side. Viewers online, you can join with us at give.centralja.org and select Christ for the Crisis, and there you may be able to make your contribution. And remember, whenever that you are in doubt, you can put away something, and at the end of the week, bring it to church on Sabbath and make your contribution. As I invite my usher to join with me at this time, very, very quickly. Today, I make one of my many contributions. I invite for you to also do the same as together, along with the fellow brothers and sisters across Central Jamaica Conference and the diaspora, we give towards the mission. I invite for you at this time to bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father and great God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be your servants. As co-laborers in the vineyard, we ask of you, Heavenly Father, to give us the strength. Bless us so that we can continue to give towards the mission. We pray even now, Heavenly Father, as various congregations will collect towards the mission of the church, that together we will fulfill what you have mandated for us to do. Continue to be our friend, our king, and our leader. In Jesus' name we pray and say thanks. Amen.
May I invite you all to please stand. You are in the main sanctuary. We are spread across the three parishes in Jamaica. You're in the United States of America. You're in Canada, wherever you are. May I invite you to stand up this time as we seek the Lord earnestly in prayer. Your heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed and all our thoughts are lifted to heaven bound. Our wonderful Savior, creator of this vast universe. We know that without you, God Almighty, we are nothing. But yet still with you, we can do all things because it is Christ to whom would have strengthened us. It is you who gave us strength to work, to wake us this morning from our sleep. And we have come by here to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Nothing in our hands we bring God, but we have come by here to hold on to the never-ending, changing hands of God. We know that without you, we are men and women most miserable. But we know that with you, we can be all things through Christ who strengthens us. I present those that are watching even now, our brothers and sisters whom have not yet made you as their Lord and Savior from sin. This earth is coming to an end. And if there is never a time to know God, it is now. So I pray even now, the Spirit of the living God, that as your man servant, Pastor Brown, preaches the everlasting gospel that men and women boys and girls will come to the realization that the greatest gift of this world is not silver and gold it is not to have a million dollar though these things are good to have a fancy vehicle a big house but the greatest gift is the gift of Jesus Christ I pray, Father, that we will come to the realization that this earth is not our home because we are just pilgrims passing through this weary land. Visit our brothers and sisters in Canada, in the United States of America, in England, in Manchester, in St. Catherine, in St. Elizabeth, in St. Thomas and St. Mary, let them know that Jesus saves. Oh yes, you save. Amidst the crises of this world, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other because Jesus is the way. Bless your men servant, we pray, as we wait upon the word. For Christ's sake, let the church say, Amen and Amen. Amen. Truly, the Spirit of the living God is in this place. And I just want you, whether you're in the physical sanctuary here with us or online, to just type in the chat, Amen. And let me tell you something, Lisa, the chat is lighting up. Oh, yes. <laughs> I thought it was lighting up a little earlier, but then Pastor came on, Pastor Barnaby, yes. and invited our brothers and sisters, our friends, our visitors to go in the chat and just check in. And let me tell you something, persons have been checking in. I cannot keep up. So I'm going to get myself in a little bit of trouble right now because I'm going to be calling a few names. Catch a fire. But I hope that you will forgive me if I missed you, but we really have to say a special 
can I say big up? Yes, let me use that term. Yes. A special welcome, a special hello, and a special good old Jamaican colloquial big up to those of you who have been typing in the chat. We've been truly blessed. Palm SDA has checked in. The Mandeville SDA Church has checked in. The Oakton Betty SDA Church has che checked in. Clifton, Old Harbor Bay, and Church Penn. The Newport SDA, Hals Hall District, Amen. and the Beverly SDA. And as I said, I know I'm going to get myself in some trouble <laughs> so for right. having forgotten you. But if I have forgotten you, then you know that you come again tomorrow and check in one more time. And Lisette, I know you have a very important task to carry out this evening. But I also want to say a very special welcome to some persons from outside of our shores who are in the chat. They are saying hello, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and sharing in the chat. Brother Owen Jones is checking in from Charlotte in Florida. Everett James is also in Florida, and we say good evening, Brother James. Uh, Dalio, I hope I got that right. Dali, hope I got that right. Patchmore from Freeport in Grand Bahama is checking in. Maxine Anderson, the ever faithful ever Maxine faithful. Anderson. Yes. <laughs> she has been with us from the beginning of online church here in CJC. She is checking in from Texas. And of course, uh, Angela Barrett is checking in from Atlanta, Georgia. And Madika Brown from Queens, New York. And so if we missed you, we invite you to come back tomorrow, tomorrow. when we have another Spirit-filled night and check in and we'll be sure that you will be blessed. My sister, go right ahead. Roma, a very special person is checking in. <laughs> yes, he has given excellent service to the Adventist Church for over 35 years. Of course, he has served at Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists as District Pastor, Departmental Director, Executive Secretary, President for 10 years, and an overall 20 years in administration at the CJC. He is currently the President of the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists since 2010, you know. Yes. That's and a long time. That's a long yeah. time. And he now has guardianship of five conferences. Big job. He has awesome passion for mission. He is a preacher, teacher, outreacher. And I guess you have noticed this man is forever young. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Everett Brown. And he has an equally forever young, beautiful wife, Sister Lana Brown, who supports him in ministry. And of course, their two sons, Jonathan and Matthew. Welcome, warm welcome, Brown family. Let us continue to pray for the speaker, Pastor Everett Brown. And may the Holy Spirit prepare our hearts for the gospel in song and the spoken word. All things work for our good But sometimes we don't see how they could struggles that break our hearts into sometimes binds us to the truth our father knows what's best for us but his ways are not our own so when the pathway grows dim and you just can't see him, remember you're never alone. Ooh. God is too wise to be mistaken, and God is too good to be unkind so if you don't understand if you don't see his plan when you can't trace his hand trust his heart trust 
trust is the future in his hands so don't live as those who have no hope for our hope is found in him we see the present clearly but he sees the first Like a tapestry, he is weaving you and me to someday be just like him. Oh. God is too wise to be mistaken, and God is too good to be unkind so if you don't understand if you don't see his plan when you can't trace his hand trust his heart he alone is faithful and true he alone knows what is best for you God is too wise to be mistaken and God is too good to be unkind so if you don't understand if you can't see his plan if you can't trace his hand trust his heart if you don't understand if you don't see his plan when you can't trace his hand trust
just to make it all alone and I falter yes I falter by the way but so when you taught me how to pray and to
what you want for me, for me. so much praise team how was your day today how was your day today <laughs> looking good tonight just want to give a big shout out to our friends from the Bendon Church those persons who are at the St. John's Heights watching praying for this program God has been good amen and tonight I believe that the Spirit of God is in this place bow your heads with me Heavenly Father we come in your presence tonight oh God to thank you for your grace we come in your presence tonight, O oh God, to thank you for your love. We praise your name. We magnify your name, O oh God. Because in spite of our sin, in spite of our waywardness, you still love us with an everlasting love. And so as we open your words tonight, O oh God, I pray that you will touch my mind i pray that you will touch my voice i pray oh god that the message will go forth with power and with clarity in the name of jesus christ i pray and let the people of god say amen 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 holiness 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 is what i long for holiness is what i Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tonight, our subject is the perfect gift. Can somebody say the perfect gift? 
Tonight's message is a continuation of the message last night. Just about a week ago, just over a week ago, a friend of mine, we met at a particular place and we, we entered into a brother-to-brother -brother conversation. You know those conversation pastors, but this was a brother-to-brother -brother, uh, conversation. And we were engaged in a discussion as to what it means to be perfect. Mm -mm. what it means to be perfect. It was a conversation that we, we didn't end and we promised each other that we would continue the conversation. And indeed, I'm looking forward to completing that discussion with my brother as to what it means to be perfect. That is not the conversation that I want to have with you tonight. That's not the conversation that I'll be having. Perfect, as good as it comes. Perfect, as good as can be in all respect. Free from all defects. Perfect. The perfect gift God gave. Giving a gift to someone, giving something to someone willingly is giving a gift. Can I hear you say amen? Giving something willingly to someone without that gift costing the person anything, giving it willingly and freely is indeed giving a gift. My wife and I, we had a very interesting uh, situation. A nice interesting situation, Pastor Barnaby, a few years ago. Could have been in 20, 2017, the 28th of August, 2017. You see, a couple in Canada decided to give us an anniversary treat. By the way, our, our, our wedding anniversary is usually on the 29th of August. Don't ask me how many years you have been married, Pastor. I won't be able to tell you. But it's on the 28th of August, sometime in the past. Mm-hmm. So this couple, this couple decided that they were going to give us an anniversary gift treat. And all expenses paid trip to Canada. And we were supposed to be staying over uh, as we get into, in, in, into, in, into, into, into Canada. They would drive us from Toronto up to Niagara Falls. And we would be staying in one of those lovely hotels. And we were excited about our anniversary treat. Yes, we decided to, 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 to watch me now. We decided, I'm saying all expenses paid, costing us nothing. And so we, we put our little things together and we decided to ask Jonathan and Matthew, our two sons, to drive us to the airport. And they did. And they left us and we went in. We checked in. And when we checked in, we recognize that the flight was delayed. And during the delay, they decided that this flight was canceled. But they decided that they were going to put us on a flight because we had to get to Canada. They were going to put us on a flight there, uh, uh, New York. We would stay the night over in New York, and as a matter of fact, they would be transporting us to New York first class and from New York to Canada first class. While we were waiting on our first class flight, 
Matthew called. And he says, Dad, Jonathan met in an accident. Everything was perfect. And when Matthew called, I said to Lana, okay, uh, my neighbor, um, Brother Davis, and others are there with him. That's fine, because all was on my mind at that time was the first class flight into New York, into Toronto, into, uh, in, into, into Niagara Falls uh, with, my, with my wife. No thing was going to stop me from doing that. And my wife turned to me and says, Everett, I'm not going. I'm going back home to be with my two big babies. A perfect gift, I thought. But it was imperfect. The main person, the main character of the Holy Scripture is both New Testament and Old Testament is not Satan. The main character as revealed in the Holy Scriptures is not imperfect, wicked Satan or the devil. The main character in the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament, is God. And how God, in His goodness and His grace, came down to our level in the form of Jesus and paid the ultimate price to save a sinner like you and a sinner like me. Can I hear you say amen? The focus of this Christ for the crisis series is Jesus. The good news we preach is not about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The good news we preach is not about the Ten Commandments. The good news we preach is not about vegetarianism. These are important, but the good news we preach is about Jesus and his love, Jesus and his grace, Jesus and his mercy. The heart of our hope, the longing of our heart is Jesus. The teachings and doctrines of the Bible is not about Seventh-day Adventism. The teachings and doctrines that we espouse is about Jesus and his selfless sacrifice to save sinners. Can I hear you say amen? We believe, and I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that I am saved, that we are saved by grace, through faith in Jesus, and Jesus Christ alone. Can I say that again? All that I have been saying up to this point is for you to recognize that even though we have sinned, we have a Savior. And we are saved not by our good looks. We are saved not by our, what we possess. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pause tonight and get back to where we left off last night because the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3 and God and when and when the woman verse 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired and to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof, and did, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 7 says, And the eyes of them both were what? Opened, 
And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made aprons of themselves. And what they did, the Bible says in verse 8, that they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and Eve hid themselves from God amongst the trees of the garden. You see, because of Adam and Eve's disobedience, because of their lawlessness, Adam and Eve deserve to die. And all of us, Adam's children, deserve to die also. The Bible tells us that in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, that for not some of us, the Bible says for all, and that includes all. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are sinners. We are sinners because we are children of Adam and Eve. And as a result of that, we have inherited sinful tendencies. You don't have to sin to, be a, to do sinful acts to be a sinner. You are a sinner by birth. Praise God. There is hope for sinners. Praise God, there is hope for a sinner like me because Paul in Romans chapter 6 says that for although the wages of sin is death, hallelujah, the gift of God is eternal life to a church. The Bible says that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can I hear you say amen? When Adam and Eve sinned, they should have died. When Adam and Eve sinned and when sin entered into the world, Adam and Eve should have died. And I'm not too sure, my brother. I'm not too sure. I, I, I'm not able to fathom the the, the, the magnitude and the depth of God's mercy. Oh, depth of mercy. I cannot fathom. I, 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 I must tell you, I love my wife. I love my sons. But I cannot fathom the extent of God's love, the extent of God's grace. I don't know why God chose not to kill Adam and Eve. Yes, I know, because he's love. Yes, I know, because he's merciful. Yes, I know, because he's gracious. Yes, I know, because his character is love. God took the initiative. And inspiration tells us that before the foundation of the world, God, the triune God, decided that if man would sin, because man was created with the choice to choose to follow God or to choose to disobey God, God in his wisdom decided that if man would sin, that he would make a way to rescue man from sin. Nothing catches God by surprise. And so he knew that if man sinned, he would put in place a process, a plan to rescue mankind. Yes, the wages of sin is, is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And God decided that he would condescend to pay the ultimate price for man's sin. Can I hear you say amen?
Can I hear you say hallelujah? Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Or chapter 2 and verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his what? Great love which he what? Loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses. He made us, watch me, I'm going somewhere tonight. He made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you what? Have been saved. And raised us up together. And made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been what? Saved. Now come with me. Come with me. For by grace you what? have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is what? A gift of God. Watch me now tonight. Cease and settle. I need your help, language teachers. The expression that the action of saving it's not something future. The expression have been saved is a perfect action. Am I correct? It tells me, based on the language, Pastor Barnaby, that the action of saving, when Paul wrote the action of saving, was already completed. Can I hear you say amen? For by grace you have been saved, not will be saved, or might be saved. For by grace you have been saved. It is the gift of God. My eternal salvation, your eternal salvation. Oh, watch me tonight, Holy Spirit. I'm not here tonight questioning whether or not I will be saved. I'm not here tonight wondering whether or not I will be saved. I have already received the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. There is no Jesus, there is no salvation. If there is no Jesus, there is no future. But yes, there is Jesus. The Bible tells us that he came, that he lived, that he died, that he rose, and that he is interceding on our behalf tonight in glory beside his Father. God has already acted on your behalf. Salvation is an act of God. Jesus. Sin is an act of Satan. Sin started with Satan. Righteousness started with God. And, 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 and Satan stepped out into God's perfect domain and sin developed in him. And Satan came here to earth, tempted Adam and Eve, and they disobeyed God. 
They transgress God's law and deserve to die. But God, who is rich in mercy, God, who is the embodiment of grace, God, who is the embodiment of love, decided that he would die so that man could live. That is grace. Grace is not the seventh day Sabbath. Grace is not Sunday. Grace is a second chance. God decided that he was going to give mankind a second chance. So the Bible says, but he came, lived, and died so that we might live. In the Genesis story, Adam and Eve did not die. No, they did not die at that time. I wonder if anyone have ever cited Adam and Eve? No, because ultimately Adam and Eve died. And so God's word is true. Adam died. Adam children died. Adam grandchildren died. Great grandchildren died, and we will also die. But because of grace, hallelujah, because of Jesus, all of those persons who live for Jesus, all of those persons who die in Jesus, die with a hope. And as long as Jesus, our hope, our perfect gift is alive, resurrection power will bring us back from the grave. When he called, we will answer. When he called, we will come forth if we die in him. Jesus, therefore, is the perfect gift that God gave to sinful mankind. Jesus is the perfect gift. The Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is not only the gift for me and to me. Jesus is the gift for the entire sinful human race. Can I hear you say amen? Grace is the second chance that God gave to us. But grace did not die. Jesus died. And Jesus, therefore, is my perfect gift. Jesus is your perfect gift. This decision, this action by God to die so that we might live expresses his compassion and his infinite love for me and for you. Can I hear you say amen? Therefore, I can walk out of this meeting tonight confident that as long as Jesus is alive, I am alive. Woo! Because in him, 
was life unborrowed and underived. The one who went to Lazarus' tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth, has life in himself, and he gives life to those who submit their lives into his hand. Can I hear you say amen? The Bible says, in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, For he made him who knew no sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise the Lord. Watch me now. I was not there when Satan tempted Adam and Eve. No. I had nothing to do with it. Most of you, you don't know my father. He died in 1994. And when people see me, they usually say, oh, uh, that young man looks like his daddy, Kenneth. My father, uh, uh, was Kenneth George Brown. What a name. Mm -hmm. And they say that I'm as handsome as my father. He talks like his father. He looks like his father. He walks like his father. And I have discovered now that some of the attributes that I have, Matthew has them. Jonathan has them. Mm, I'm going somewhere. Because of sin, I as a sinner, Adam's sin, I have some sinful tendency. Woo. But I can change my sinful tendency. And practice righteous tendencies because of my choice. Oh, where I'm going somewhere. Because Adam sinned, all of us became sinners. The Bible says that he became sin for us. He came so that all of us might who, who him who knew sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Watch me where I'm going. Satan made us sinners. God in his righteousness wants to make us righteous in him. One man sin made all the world sinners. That's how Paul argues it. And because of one man's righteousness, all of us can become righteous through him. If Satan can tempt me and I choose to lie, Jesus can reside in me and give me the power to walk as he walked. Give me the power to live as he lived. Give me the power to become his son. He can. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We do not and cannot do anything to qualify or benefit from this action of God. We cannot. The Bible says, <laughs> I'm, I'm confessing now. I'm attracted to Lana. Because of her attractiveness, Pastor Smith. She's a gorgeous, attractive woman. 
And so I am attracted to her. She is attractive. There was nothing attractive about us where God is concerned. The Bible says, watch it now, the Bible says, when we were still ugly, whoo, when we were still in our sin, when we were without strength, in due time, God died for the ungodly. Cease and settle tonight. We're attracted to people because we're attractive. We're attracted to people for different reasons. We are not attractive to, attracted to people because they are unattractive. No. But God thinks different. God acts different. His character is different. He is motivated by pure, undefined love for the unlovable. Grace for the un... What have you? The Bible says that God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. I'm not finished yet. While we were yet sinners, that murderer that murdered four of his family member allegedly Jesus died for him <laughs> that wayward son who is overcome by drugs and is not able to think properly oh Jesus came and died for him that woman that young lady whose life is messed up. That man who has been working to take care of his family but cannot make ends meet because the economic situation doesn't lend itself to him to, to be able to do that. And he is struggling. God died for him. Watch it. When I start to court her, me never know if me going make it. And, and so when I start courting my wife, with all of those attractiveness, when I start courting her, and one, one time I went to, I took her out somewhere, somewhere and I said, listen, this is the real deal. Not in those words, you know. I have my little... Um, it's a fruit punch. And I feel that the thing was right for me to pop the thing. And when I said, hey, listen, this is it. I would love to. I said, well, you know. She didn't call me pastor then, Everett. Well, you know, Everett, I may not be feeling the same way you're feeling. <laughs> and I because I didn't want to cry I took up the took up the food punch and I tasted it and it tasted like Cersei bitter but I hold myself together and I went home and I prayed Prayer changes things. Even if you don't love Jesus, he still loves you. And he loves you when you fail. 
He loves you when you, when you don't fail. He loves you when you look good. And he, and he loves you when you don't look good. He loves you with an everlasting love. And, and the Bible says, with loving kindness, he's drawing you to himself. And so, the very minute, the very minute, the very minute, the very minute, if you are a sinner, the very minute, the very minute, the very minute, if you're a sinner, the very minute you acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior, that very who? The Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith. The Bible says that we have been saved. It means that it's an action that happened in the past that continues in the present. It's an action that will always be. Nothing can stop Jesus from save you if you want him to save you. Can I say amen? And so, wherever you are tonight, your sins are many. You are messed up and you don't believe that God is going to love you with his ever. He does. And in your sins, in your ugliness, in your waywardness, just like that boy who came back to his father, the minute you return to Jesus. He treats you as you have never sinned. And the sin, the, the, the act that he did many years ago covers you. There are some persons, there are some persons, my mother told me that before she got baptized, she had to spend 12 months, a year, in what you call inquirer's class. And she had to go through all of the doctrines. Nowhere in the scripture does the scripture say doctrines take away sin. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We need to get into a relationship with Jesus for a relationship with the church is important. But a relationship with Jesus is far more important. It is important. Oh, uh, I know some people might be saying, Pastor Brown, take it easy, man. Because this is the first week of the series. And you have many more nights. And you need to save some of your energy for later because you still have Lana. <laughs> you never see me when Liverpool playing and Liverpool score. If I can be excited about a little, pardon me, me expression, idiot, pardon me, football match. What about my soul salvation? I am excited about what God did for me. Me, a sinner who did not deserve it. We are not deserving of God's grace. We are not deserving of Jesus. We turn our backs on him. We walk away from him. We make him look bad. But like Adam and Eve, he keeps running after us. He keeps coming after us to the extent that he died for us. And even when he died for us, he sent his Holy Spirit to rope us seen when we try to run away away from him. What a God. What a Savior. What a marvelous, loving, gracious Savior we have in Jesus. Mm. Truth be told, I'm looking forward, Pastor Barnaby, 
to another anniversary gift. I'm not begging one. I'm not begging one, but it was sweet. And I'm looking forward to another one. I said, I'm not begging anything. I'm just saying that I'm looking forward to one more. I don't have any friends in France. But that's where I'm thinking. God say you must desire the best gifts. But I may not even get one down to Ocho Rios. I may not get that. But can I tell you, the gift that God has is available every night. As long as you're alive. The gift that God has available doesn't cost anything to you. Yes, it is a gift. His perfect gift. His gift of eternal life. It is free, purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Salvation, our salvation, my salvation, your salvation is made possible by grace. God's amazing grace when we exercise faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 5, in Romans 5, and hold, hold, I'm, 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 fin I'm finishing. Romans 5 and verse, the Romans 5 and verse 12 says, therefore, and, and these are some of my, my gems. When I lie on my back tonight, and I look up to heaven. And I hear the words of Jesus Christ. It gives me a sense of security. The Bible says, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin. And thus death spread to all men. Because all have sinned. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. This is where I was going. My reading tells me that you're a Jew, not because of your father. A person is classified or regarded as a Jew because of his mother's bloodline. And so if you are, if if your mother is a Jew, it doesn't matter who your papa is. You're a Jew. Yes. We all became sinners because of Satan. Tonight, it's not wishful thinking. Tonight, it is not maybe if one man who is not all powerful, if the creature can make us sinners, then the creator and life giver, the one who is all powerful, is, has power to save and can make us his sons and his daughters. And so I'm saying to tonight, Satan, no longer you're going to have your foot on my throat. No longer you're going to mess up my mind and tell me that I can make it. I can make it. I will make it. Because Jesus made it for me. And because he's my papa, I am I'm a son, and as a son, I have right, right to my father's kingdom, right to my father's eternal life. More than that, he is able to keep you and to cover you 
from the wicked, sinful, satanic forces. All that you need to do is to choose. To choose. To choose Jesus. And when you choose Jesus, he gives you power. And I'm finished. I'm going to finish that tomorrow. When you choose Jesus, he gives you wonder working power inside of you to, 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 to be able to resist the devil. And, and, and if you resist the devil today, and if you resist the devil tomorrow, and if you resist the devil next, next week, Jesus give you that kind of power to, so every time the devil comes, you resist him to the extent that him stop troubling you. Pardon me. He will stop tempting you because he knows that he has lost. I'm making it as simple as possible. Friends, do not go home tonight with your sins unconfessed because Jesus has already paid the price for your sins. Don't go home tonight feeling that Jesus will condemn you. If you're at home, if you're listening tonight, what he wants you to do is to take your sins to him. Take your messed up lives to him. Take your disobedience to him and he will set it right. Tonight, if I did not do it this evening already, if I did not do it last week already. I would do it again tonight to accept God's perfect gift, Jesus, as my personal Savior from sin. Have you given your life to him? Tonight, each one must make a decision. It's either a decision to continue to suffer as a son of Satan and sin and ultimately die with him or accept the gift of salvation that Jesus Christ offers. I beseech you, my brothers and sisters. I beseech you, I urge you, choose Jesus. Give your life to him tonight. Make that first step and accept his gift, Jesus. Accept his grace. Accept his pardon. Accept his eternal salvation and imputed righteousness and experience salvation here and now. Do you want Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Claim. Claim eternal life tonight by faith. And not even the host of hell can rob you of eternity. But Jesus earn for you. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus. We have been saved. We are being saved. Jesus is that perfect gift. Don't walk away from him. Take him as your personal savior from sin. on an ego trip I'm nothing on my own I make mistakes and often slip just come on flesh and bone 
But someday I'll prove just why he said I'm of a special kind. For when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He knew me. Yes, he loves me. He Somebody tonight, somebody tonight, somebody tonight, somebody tonight, somebody tonight has experienced. Someone tonight has been delivered. Someone tonight has broken free from Satan and has anchored his or her faith in Jesus. He knew you. He knew you. A sinner he knew you he knew who you are but yet he died for you I want to pray for you tonight I just want to pray for you as you step out in faith and give your life to Jesus you're sitting at home you're watching you're standing before that screen and you're saying what must I do with Jesus? What I want you to do with Jesus is just to claim him as Savior. What I want you to do with Jesus is just to bow your heads and say, Jesus, take my life and let it be. What I want you to do with Jesus is to give him that old wretched life of yours and let him wash you and lead you in a new experience of joy, peace, happiness. Sing one more time, praise team, as we pray tonight. He knew me, yet he Somebody here tonight, you want to raise your hand and say, Evangelist, I want to accept Jesus as my gift. I want to accept Jesus. Somebody, you want to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Is there somebody? Somebody making a decision for Jesus. You want to raise your hand? I want to pray for you tonight. I'm going to ask my friend, I'm going to ask my friend, the publishing ministry's director of the conference, your pastor, Pastor Smith, to pray a short prayer tonight for you. You there in Canada making a decision. You there in the United States making a decision. You there in Manchester. You there at St. John's Height. You there in Waterford. You there at Sydenham. You are present here making a decision for Jesus. Your heads are bowed. I'm not asking you to stand. Your heads are bowed wherever you are. 
We are going to be praying tonight. We are going to be praying for you. We are going to be praying for victory over sin. Your heads are bowed. Your heads are bowed. Your heads are bowed. Just before Pastor prays, just before Pastor prays, the Spirit of God tells me that I must give someone the opportunity. Someone the opportunity. Someone the opportunity. There may be someone here tonight who wants to say, Pastor, I am giving my life to Jesus and I am making a decision that the first opportunity I get, I'm going to surrender my life in the water grave of baptism. Is there somebody where you are, your friend may slip a decision card into your hands. Wherever you are, you may type in the chat, I have given my life to Jesus and I want Bible study. Wherever you are, make that decision in your heart. Make that decision by signing up those decision cards. Make that decision. Make that decision tonight for Jesus. We are praying. We are praying for victory. We are praying for someone tonight who has been delivered and someone who must be delivered in the name of Jesus tonight. Pastor Smith, let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we are grateful and we are happy for the reminder that you're a God of love. We're happy that you so love us, that you left the splendor of glory. Amen. Where angels cry, holy, holy, holy. You came down to this world, born as a babe in Bethlehem manger. Grew up among your children. Went all the way to Calvary Cross. Pay the price so that we can all have life and have it more abundantly. Tonight, Lord, we know that we do not deserve your love. We know, Lord, that we do not deserve your kindness. But, oh, God, tonight we say Gracious thank God. you for loving us. Amen. Thank you for being the God who you are. And thank you, Lord, for taking a nobody and turning that person into a somebody. Thank you, God, for your love tonight. Tonight, Lord, we acknowledge your love. That man... In his bedroom tonight, he's acknowledging your love. Amen. That lady in her living room tonight, she's acknowledging your love. And oh God, she cannot hold out any longer. So tonight, Lord, I pray that you're the power of the Holy Ghost, that you will visit your children tonight and have that somebody tonight will cry out and accept your love and surrender. They're all to you tonight. So that when you return, all of us by the grace of Almighty God can go home to be with you. Thank you tonight for being the God that you are. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your words tonight. Yes, we did find ourselves in a crisis, but tonight, Lord, we know that because of you, Lord, we are set free and burdens tonight are lifted. are lifted at Calvary. I pray that you lift somebody's burden tonight, Heavenly Father. Tell the devil that he's a liar and set your children free tonight because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. We declare freedom in the name of Jesus only because of your love. Thank you tonight for hearing and thank you for answering is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
The decision you make for Jesus is a decision for eternity. And not even the power of hell can change that decision. May God bless you and keep you. See you tomorrow night as we look at the subject, Restoring Broken Relationships. I'm so unworthy. was powerful in the house tonight. That's right. There was excitement in the house tonight. And did you notice it got a little romantic in the house tonight? <laughs> it got a lot romantic in the house tonight. Amen. You know, we just want to say thanks to the preacher. Thank you, man of God. You were used by God to remind us that Jesus and his love Jesus and his grace is the perfect gift. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is that love reaching you? Just one more reminder to click on the CJC Decision 2022 link. You go ahead and invite your friend to do the same. Amen. Thank you so much, my sister. Indeed, our hearts burnt within us yes. as the preacher shared this evening. And just as Sister Liz had said, we want to encourage you, even after the program is wrapped up tonight, to make that decision for Jesus. And we are inviting you back here tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening will be our very first prayer tower. Amen. Yes, you heard right. Our prayer tower night. You cannot afford to miss this. There were a number of prayer requests in the chat. And... Those prayer requests will be prayed for, yes, right now, um, after the program has wrapped up, our prayer team is on the job. But tomorrow as well, our prayer team will be right here sharing. We are issuing a special invitation, Sister Liseth, yes. to those of you who are here in the physical uh, temple, but more so to those who were not here tonight to join us right here mm -hmm. at Brunswick Avenue Family of God Church. Come out in your numbers and join us. And of course, those persons who will not be able to join us, we want you to come into our virtual platforms and put down your prayer request. Amen. So then, That's it's it. have a good evening. <laughs> God bless and sleep well.
the goodness of God.